Hi, I'm Duewa Frazier, and this is Episode 8 of Nerdacity Podcast. Support this podcast by visiting anchor.fm slash Duewa Frazier slash support. Tweet me at Nerdacity Pod 1 on Twitter. Thanks for listening. U.S. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is on her way out, and many educators are glad about it. According to a March 2020 article published by the National Education Association, despite widespread concerns among parents and educators, it was DeVos who pressured the nation's public school to fully open in fall 2020. DeVos threatened to cut off funds to public schools that don't fully open in the fall and suggested that those funds would be rerouted to private and religious schools instead. Well, that's pretty mean. We know that public schools, particularly in urban and low-income areas, truly rely on that federal funding to operate, to feed the children during lunch and breakfast, to supply the teachers with needed materials to keep school open after school during after school clubs while parents are still working. And so to threaten schools with a loss of funding is really outrageous um, because this affects the most vulnerable populations of students, including black and brown children who rely on those schools who need the funding. In addition, the question of concern for the pressure for schools to fully open in the fall when there were not completely um, operational or uh, clear procedures for reopening and maintaining social distance and health and safety for students, where was that plan, the National Plan for Student and Teacher Safety in the face of COVID-19? That should have come from DeVos's office. Betsy DeVos's appointment as Education Secretary has been problematic for a long time. The NEA's article goes on to list a number of egregious decisions made by DeVos, including regulations requiring cross-examination of victims of campus sexual assault, college student victims. Experts, educators, and parents agreed that the proposal would effectively deter survivors of sexual assault from even coming forward. Because who wants to go through the interrogation and that kind of public embarrassment after such a personal tragedy? The article also lists lawsuits against DeVos. And so people are relieved that there will be, hopefully, a new candidate named soon. This week's Washington Post says that students are asking for Biden's administration to involve them in the next education secretary's agenda by giving them a role in education policy, which would prioritize both racial and social justice. It's certainly not too much to ask. Given the state of social justice problems in this country, what students have had to deal with, particularly those from communities that have been impacted by violence, brutalities, racial bias, so many things. These students are going through a lot and then they have to come back to school with a lack of clear plan for COVID-19 safety. DeVos's agenda did not prioritize those issues for the students, and so it is fully understandable that they would be asking to be involved this time around. A November 11th article in Inside Higher Education speculates on who 
President-elect Joe Biden's choice for Education Secretary might be. There has been a great deal of speculation, people talking about it across social media, various news outlets talking about who could be the next Education Secretary. Some education policy experts and Biden's administrative point person spoke on the need recently for the successor to DeVos for the, their, their agenda to help low-income students and those who struggle with staying enrolled in college due to mountains of student loan debt. That's real. I hope they cancel it. Loan forgiveness, please. I believe that is indeed on the docket. According to the article, education advocates say that they don't have any inside information on who Biden's top pick for education secretary might be. However, speculation is that among them, possible picks would be Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers and Lily Eskelson Garcia, former president of the National Education Association. In my perspective, as someone who has worked in education, been through teacher preparation programs, I've been a teacher, I've been a literacy specialist, I've been a professional developer, I've been a curriculum specialist, and I now have an earned doctorate in education. So in my perspective, the person who replaces Betsy DeVos should be someone with a long-standing commitment to educational equity, social justice, inclusion, cultural competencies, culturally responsive instruction, cultural sensitivity, and closing the achievement gap among all students, no matter who they are, where they come from, and all of that. The next education secretary should also be someone who is not so blinded bipartisan agendas that they cannot serve the needs of all students fairly. In other words, it's not just about the most privileged of our society. It's not just about those kids who go to private and religious schools or even the kids who just go to charter schools. It's about all students who are being educated in American schools. The next education secretary should also have a track record of exemplary leadership and scholarship even. Having served in prior leadership roles in various levels of education. It is also advisable that the person have a background in diversity. Either they have worked with diversity initiatives, they've been someone to champion and spearhead initiatives and programs to level the playing field in education, to create equitable access, to give a voice to the voiceless, to work with parents, parent advocates, community leaders, someone who is not afraid to interact, communicate with, talk to and plan for the most vulnerable and disadvantaged of our student populations and their families. It's an excellent time for an excellent time in our history for this role to be appointed with a person of color, a woman, and a person of color in mind, since historically this position has been majority male education secretaries. But I did a little research and I did find only five of the nation's education secretaries since 1953 have been women. Only three have been a person of color. And those people are Lauro Cavazos, who held the position of Education Secretary from 1988 to 1990. 
He was the first Hispanic American to serve in a presidential cabinet. Second to him, an African American by the name of Rod Page, who served as education secretary from 2001 to 2005. And an Afro Puerto Rican, John B. King Jr., who served as education secretary from 2016 to 2017. There's a long line of education secretaries. However, none have been women of color. And it's time. Since we now have our first woman of color vice president elect, Kamala D. Harris, it's certainly time to also consider a woman of color as our next United States Education Secretary. So I have a list and you may know of some of these excellent, excellent educators. One was mentioned earlier in my talk here. So I want to start and I'm going to give you background on these on these uh, excellent, excellent educators. Um, So please, I hope that you will stick around and I hope that you will Look some of these folks up if you do not know who they are. If you work in education, you probably do know who they are. Um, But if not, certainly look them up and find out about their work because one of them could very well be our next education secretary. So starting with Dr. Gloria Ladson Billings. Dr. Ladson Billings is a pioneer of cultural inclusion in education. She is a notable author educational researcher, professor, and the former Kellner Family Distinguished Professor of Urban Education in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction and faculty affiliate in the Departmental uh, in the Department of Educational Policy Studies at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Dr. Latson Billings also served as the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs at the university. She was the first black woman to become a tenured professor in UW-Madison School of Education in 1995. She earned the PhD at Stanford University in 1984. Dr. Ladson Billings investigates on critical race theory and how it applies to education. She is the author of the critically acclaimed books, Culturally Responsive Pedagogy, Beyond the Big House, The Dream Keepers, Successful Teachers of African-American Children, and Crossing Over to Canaan, The Journey of New Teachers in Diverse Classrooms. She has also authored numerous journal articles and book chapters. Dr. Latson Billings is the former editor of the American Educational Research Journal and a member of several editorial boards. Her work has received numerous scholarly awards, including the H.I. Rome's Faculty Fellowship, the NAED Spencer Postdoctoral Fellowship, and the Palmer O. Johnson Outstanding Research Award. Dr. Ladson Billings is a 2018 recipient of the AERA Distinguished Research Award, and she was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2018. And now I'd like to discuss Dr. Lisa D. Delpit, who is a professor, notable author, an educational researcher who earned advanced degrees in curriculum, instruction, and research at Harvard University. My, highly educated. Dr. Delpit also earned the BS degree in education at Antioch College. Her focus as a researcher has been elementary education with an emphasis on language and literacy development. She has also been concerned with issues relating to race, and equitable access for students of color in education. Dr. Delpit wrote essays for the Harvard Educational Review, including Skills and Other Dilemmas of a Progressive Black Educator and The Silence, Dialogue, Power and Pedagogy in Educating Others, People's Children, 
which, as I'm sure you may know, later became the foundation for her award-winning book, Other People's Children, Cultural Conflict in the Classroom. Delpit is an eminent scholar and executive director of the Center for Urban Educational Excellence at Florida International University in Miami, Florida. And Felton G. Clark's recently retired distinguished professor at Southern University in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She has served on the Commission for Research in Black Education. The third educator who I will mention and who was also mentioned in an earlier article that I discussed is Lily Eskelson Garcia. According to an article last week in the Salt Lake Tribune, Eccleson Garcia is one of the top contenders for the position of education secretary. She is a former Utah teacher and the most recent president of the National Association, the National Education Association. She was also the first Latina to head the NEA. Eccleson Garcia also led the Utah Education Association, a state branch of the NEA, from 1990 to 1996, first winning election as a write-in candidate. And a year prior, in 1989, she was named Utah Teacher of the Year. Eccleson Garcia is the former president of the Utah State Retirement System and was a member of the White House Strategy Session on Improving Hispanic Education. She was the first Hispanic to run for Congress in her state, raising almost $1 million and taking 45% of the vote against her incumbent. Eccleson Garcia earned bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Utah. Last but not least, Dr. Sonia Brookins Santelisis is the CEO of Baltimore City Schools in Maryland. Dr. Brookins Santelisis was previously Chief Academic Officer for City Schools. She was previously the Assistant Superintendent of Boston Public Schools. She also served three years as Vice President for K-12 Policy and Practice at the Education Trust, a nonprofit organization. She began her career as the Director of Professional Development and Teacher Placement with Teach for America in New York. Dr. Brookins Santelisis was a teacher and curriculum specialist in Brooklyn. She has also lectured for two years at Harvard University. She served as Executive Director of the New York City Algebra Project. Brookings Centelesis graduated from Brown University. She earned the MA in Education Administration and Doctor of Education degrees from Columbia University. So, what do you think of these proposed candidates? And again, this is my own fantasy list of who might be proposed candidates for the Education Secretary role any one of these outstanding women could be, in fact, chosen as the next appointment. I want you to know that I have nothing against men becoming, uh, being in this role, but since I previously did a podcast and blog on Kamala Harris and her historic rise to becoming the first woman of color VP elect, I thought I would continue in that vein to promote the leadership of women, and to think about how might this uh, role be envisioned with greater diversity added. So I would love to know your thoughts. Who do you think should be Biden's appointment for the next education secretary? Do you have someone in mind? Do you think that any one of these uh, outstanding educators who I mentioned would be a great candidate? I would love for you to leave me a message on my blog at Medium or tweet me at doawafraser1. You can also leave me a rating or a comment for my podcast. Thanks for listening.
I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thanks so much for listening. I also hope that you subscribe to my podcast. Please visit my website at www.duawaworld.com. Take care.